is. I'm Eric King, and you're about to hear from Alistair McLeod out of London. But first, this segment is sponsored by Mavericks Metals, which billionaire Ross B., chairman of Pan American Silver, recommends investors should buy. Mavericks Metals, symbol MMX in Canada and the U.S., and there is Tarachi Gold, where Asenko Engineering Canada bought a 9.9% stake in Tarachi Gold. And the company is led by chairman Michael Connor, founder and CEO of Isla Silver. Tarachi Gold, symbol TRG in Canada and TRGGF in the U.S. And finally, MX Exploration has a massive high-grade Perrin Gold project located in Quebec. They continue to make high-grade gold discoveries on this massive land package that already has all of the infrastructure in place, making it easy to transition into a mine. MX Exploration, symbol AMX in Canada and AMXEF in the U.S. But without any further delay, here is Alistair McLeod. Joining us now out of London is Alistair McLeod. Alistair, you, know, you wrote that this was another wild week or wild week for gold and silver, and it certainly was. We've also seen these convulsions continuing in global markets. I'm going to let you just kick it off because there's so many directions you can go with what's happening in Europe, also in Asia, as well as the North American continent. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's, it's been a very interesting week, Eric. I mean, we've, we started off on Monday with a massive bear squeeze on the precious metals, uh, particularly in silver which rose nearly 9% in one day. And not only that, but actually went better on the following day, which was Tuesday. So what we're seeing really for the rest of the week is a bit of consolidation. What happened um, to drive this was partly um, uh, the dollar uh, topped out um, and other currencies after being very, very oversold uh, rallied against the dollar. So you can see that uh, the, the pair traders, if you like, um, in the uh, hedge fund uh, um, environment, what they were doing is basically they were either – they were either uh, buying dollar, selling gold, or alternatively, selling gold, buying dollar. So um, that's really what's been driving these markets. But having said that, our precious metals are now so oversold. I mean, it's just remarkable just how oversold they have become. The uh, managed money category, which is basically hedge funds, are net short of both gold contracts on COMEX and also silver contracts. And another thing is that the deliveries um, in gold have just been absolutely remarkable. I know it was the end of the month, so we're um, rolling into a new contract, but on Friday, over 19,000 contracts were stood for delivery. I mean, I, th this is a record. It really is a record. And I think it uh, works out as something like 66 tons for, for the week. I mean, th these are huge, huge numbers in a market which isn't even meant to be a delivery market. I mean, the delivery bit is only just, um, you know, to sort of give it credibility. Now, this is important because we know that the central banks, and particularly the minor central banks, are accumulating gold. We saw that um, even the Bank of India has reported a further 30 tons uh, acquired. And um, not only that, but you can imagine that um, the Europeans in particular see what's happening to the euro. They see what's happening to their own economy. They see inflation. So what are they doing? They're going in, they're buying gold, and they're also buying ETFs. So the idea that uh, the, uh, the, the, that the bullion banks can shake the trees and get a bit more bullion out is just not going to happen. It is not going to happen. So they're going to be squeezed. And we had a new factor this week as well, and that is growing concerns over a, a GCIP, a global systemically important bank. In this case, it was Credit Suisse, which um, announced that it was uh, trying to restructure itself. The problem that the bank has is that the shares stand at a very substantial discount to book value. The discount is more than 70%. So the price to book is around about 27%, having been down to about 23, 24%. Now, you cannot raise money with that sort of share rating. And it's a problem also shared with other GSIBs. I mean, apart from Credit Suisse, on my list of uh, the GSIBs, we've only got four banks which actually have a price to book in excess of, uh, of one. Um, and those are the two Canadian banks, Toronto Dominion, Royal Bank of Canada, also Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan. All the rest are standing at a discount to book value. And the ones which are really concerning, or should be concerning, um, are Credit Agricole, which is the big French bank. That's about 34% of book, you know, of book value. Barclays, 34%. 
Deutsche Bank, 23.5%. Standard Chartered, which is another British bank, 33%. Unicredit, the big Italian bank, on 37%. What these numbers tell us is that there is an awful lot of systemic risk in these major banks, and these major banks are the ones that have uh, exposure to international markets, they uh, also have, in many cases, very significant exposure to uh, derivatives. And I think that put, putting all this together, we can see that with rising interest rates, which are destabilizing these banks, some of which are just incredibly leveraged, that there is a very strong possibility of a banking crisis in the making. And Alistair, before we move on, I just want to mention the Kappa Resources, which is trying to make one of the biggest copper gold pour free discoveries in Arizona in the last 35 years. The Kappa Resources symbol ZACA in Canada and ZACAF in the U.S. And there is Fosterville South that has billionaire Eric Sprott and Ross Beatty's investors and is looking to replicate the success of Kirkland Lake Gold. Fosterville South symbol FSX in Canada and FSXLF in the U.S. US. And finally, there is Zach Attack at Silver, which has billionaire Eric Sprott as a significant investor and is poised for a very big 2022 after their stunning acquisition where Alamos Gold became the largest shareholder. Zach Attack at Silver assembles ZAC in Canada and ZCTSF in the U.S. Now back to the interview with Alistair McLeod. So we need to watch this uh, Credit Suisse situation and any further developments. I mean, it could be, I mean, I've had it described to me by someone as this is probably the Lehman moment. Um, I think it's too early to say that. But nonetheless, this is very, very important. Now, today also we had um, the September unemployment figures, which came in slightly better than esti estimated, I think 263,000, compared with an average estimate of 255,000. This has spooked the market a bit because I think that um, a lot of the money was betting on a poor number, which uh, would mean that um, the, the pressure for interest rates to rise would be lessened on the Fed, the Fed would uh, soft pedal a bit, and they were all hoping that. Not a bit of it. Uh, the result is that everybody's got a bit spooked. We have got the dollar has gone higher. Wall Street has come off. I think the last I saw Wall Street was down uh, 560 points. Um, and uh, gold and silver have been, uh, have been hit, but not hugely. I mean, they are still well up on uh, the week. And so this, I think, we would see as a fairly natural situation. As to next week, I think there's quite a lot of stuff that we need to look out for. Uh, firstly, the technical situation for gold and silver is, as I say, there's none around. And not only that, but the managed money, the hedge funds, are already short of both contracts. We will get an update on that with the commitment of traders figures later on tonight. But uh, the idea that this can get more oversold is very, very limited. So that's the first thing. I think the second thing is, as I said earlier, we've got to watch this systemic risk situation. And the third thing is I think it's becoming increasingly um, obvious to uh, investors generally that uh, central banks have got a choice to make. Either they protect their currencies by raising interest rates, which are way behind the curve still. I mean, we've got inflation rates running. I mean, in, in Holland, it was, or the Netherlands, it was up to 17%, for goodness sake. You know, there's no way that current level of interest rates are sustainable in that sort of environment. So that's one half of it. The other half of it is there is no doubt that bank credit is now contracting. It's undermining financial markets and it will begin to seriously undermine non-financial markets. Putting all that together, you can see that we are heading into a recession which promises to be very, very deep. No central bank wants to raise interest rates in these circumstances. They're being forced into it. Investors are just praying, I think, that, um, that the central banks will protect financial markets rather than protect their currencies by raising rates. That is the big question that I think we're going to face. And that question or the answer to that will evolve next week. So I think we've got three things to watch for, uh, Eric. Firstly, is the technical situation. Secondly, systemic risk from the banking sector. And we'll be looking for further announcements for Credit Suisse. We may indeed get something over the weekend. And the third thing is this balance. Which way are these central banks going to go? Are they going to protect their currencies? 
or are they going to protect financial markets? That is a black and white, either or. There is no middle ground. Alistair McLeod, out of London. Thank you for joining us on King World News. My pleasure, Eric. Be sure to tune in as we will continue to release interviews with the top people in the world throughout the week. Also, make sure to check out the King World News blog.